Hi there, Bob from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday again, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how we can take a particle emitter and how we can then instance that emitter. We can make as many instance copies as we like. We can even use it in MoGraph cloners with all of the MoGraph tools. So we'll be doing this to get this really cool kaleidoscope effect, but obviously the main theory we're looking at here is how we can instance particle emitters. So let's get started. In our scene we have this XP emitter in the object tab we're in rectangle mode, the width is 30 centimeters, height 0, so it's just this flat emitter, and then in the emission tab we're in rate, 60 frames lifespan, 2000 per second uh, birth rate, and a speed of 50. And in the display tab we are set to dots, the color mode is gradient parameter, the gradient parameter we're using is the direction of the particle and the axis is the bank and we've loaded in this preset because there's no banking going on at the moment they're all just the same color right let's just get a bit of movement in here we'll go to insidium x particles nexus turbulence and let's just put this uh, strength up to say 15. And what we're going to do is we don't want the turbulence to move the particles up and down on this y axis so let's get the axis direction scale on the y and just put that on zero and if we hit play now that turbulence is moving those particles on the x and the z in this quite noisy fashion okay so what we want to do is show you how you can instance emitters and how you can clone emitters. So first of all, let's do the cloning method. If I bring in a MoGraph cloner, set it to radial and put the count up to say 11, and then drop my emitter base as a child of the cloner, you can see that it has cloned these shapes as we would expect in this radial fashion. But if I hit play, it's not working. It's not cloning the particles as well. What we have to do is this. Let's just take that emitter base out the cloner. What we need to do is get a new emitter and put it in instance mode. So to do that, look, let's go to Insidium X Particles Emitter. And let's just rename this one Emitter uh, instance mode and we'll go to the object tab and so for the shape instead of it being a rectangle we want to go to the bottom to instance and then it says which emitter do you want what's kind of the parent emitter which one are you instancing from let's drag in our emitter base and now we'll make our emitter base invisible so we're no longer looking at the emitter base and if we hit play you'll see that our emitter instance mode is an instance of our emitter base. It's exactly the same. Cool. And now if we put this emitter instance as part of our cloner and hit play, yes, it's working. So it is instancing those emitters. Uh, it's cloning them for every one of those clone numbers. Very cool. And you're starting to see the start of this, um, in, for this scene, this kind of kaleidoscopic effect, but it's not quite right yet. So let me show you one more thing that we're able to do once we're in instance mode. Let's just take that out of the cloner. So we can clone emitters in instance mode. We can also create individual instances as well, should we wish, and position them wherever you want. Let me demonstrate that. So, um, if we go to our objects here and bring in a instance object, let's bring it to the bottom. And this instance, let's just move it over here to the right. And we want to make an instance of our emitter instance. So let's, in that instance object, drag in this as the reference object, hit play. And there we go. We've got an instance of it. This is the original one. This is our instance object, and we can move that around. So to get our kaleidoscope um, effect working, what we're going to do is we're going to mirror this so that um, they sit on top of each other, but they're perfectly mirrored. And to do that, on the instance object, I'm going to go to the coordinates, and we're going to flip the x-axis to mirror it. And to do that, we just put minus 1 in the x scale. And when I hit enter, if you look at the axis, hit enter now, there, it's flipped it. So if we hit play, now these instances are mirrored. Great. So then we'll put this at the same position 
and we get this mirroring effect. Very cool. So now the final thing to get this in to, to, to get our kind of kaleidoscopic effect working is we need to put both of these into our cloner. So for every cloned point, we have um, these mirrored emitters. To do that, first of all, we need to group them together. So let's select both of them, hit Alt G, and that's group them together in a null. Let's put the null in the cloner. And now, for every clone, it has two of those emitters. It has the regular one and the mirrored one. Brilliant. And you can start seeing this really trippy kaleidoscopic effect working for us. That's looking good. So now we can adjust the look of this by adjusting the turbulence. Let's go to our turbulence object. And in the object tab, let's change this to Voronoi's. And let's increase the octaves, reduce the persistence, hit play. And now we'll have a very different type of turbulence, which is going to give us a different patterning of our particles. And we're getting this. I mean, it's such an intricate, beautiful look, isn't it? And all it is is some mirrored instanced emitters. Very cool. And you can use all of the other um, Nexus and X particles tools to adjust these particles for different looks. For example, we could go and bring in a Nexus speed modifier and let's set that to acceleration, but put the exponential on zero. So there's no acceleration, but now we'll limit the speed of those particles to say 50 centimeters, but really push up this turbulent strength. So the turbulence is really trying to move them around aggressively, but the speed is locking them in at that slow speed. And we get these really nice evolving patterns of particles so very very cool effect for this kind of kaleidoscope look but the underlying theory is that we can take emitters and we can instance and clone them